Hey there, just before we start this podcast, I would really like to thank you for following the podcast, listening to it, or even watching it, um, and for supporting the Zebra Rivals League. If you want to further support the Zebra Rivals League for, even, for all the seasons that are coming up, uh, make sure to like, follow, subscribe, uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh, even go to the Discord. Um, and if you really want to, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Rivals. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy this podcast. <music> All right, welcome back everybody to the Sea Rivals podcast. This is season zero, actually still, it's the kickstart season, and this is episode four. Uh, with me today, I've got Nine Fingers, and later in this podcast, we will have Van Blade joining us from Slavs. Uh, with me also is, of course, Corto, uh, our very special Co-Corto Co tournament organizer. This is a tricky one. Um, but first, I'd like to introduce Nine Fingers, uh, who's had a... A very big, big grudge this season against uh, Heather, making sure he becomes even better. And I'm going to do my very best in the last round to confirm his uh, his prophecy. Um, so <laughs> welcome, welcome to this uh, podcast, Nine Fingers. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. And uh, like the thing that annoys me with Heather is I literally made like a whole extra thing for when he dies, and since then his whole team's been protecting him. Oh, man. He needs to he needs to man up and actually get involved and just not hide behind the mm -hmm. whole 14 rest of the object ultras. It's getting, it's getting annoying, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll, I'll make sure to, to get something done in the next game that we play him again yeah. on Sunday, I think it is. Just, like, literally, the, the whole mission of Triarch is just to kill Head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've, I've actually posted not, that... Nothing uh, else matters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've posted that in the in the tournament info the, the, that we have. Like, okay, next week is our match against the uh, Jacked Ultras, and our, our, our goal is to, to destroy Header, and that's it. <laughs> Mission accomplished. I mean, it need, it needs we, to are, we are already lost as well, so no, it's just fine. All right. <laughs> um, jokes aside, uh, for those who don't know you yet, I can't imagine that if you watch or listen to the Sea Rivals podcast uh, that you don't know Nine Fingers because he's one of the casters for actually quite a few of the games. I think most of the English games. Um, but yeah, still, I've done, I've done, I think shot. I might have done the most actually of the English casters. Yeah, pretty uh, sure. I've just, I've just got the time at the minute, so it works out really well. Yeah um yeah so i'm nine fingers i literally do have nine fingers people always ask do you actually have nine mm -hmm. fingers yes yes i do so i have improved aerodynamics is how i like to call it um yeah that's about it i'm shit basically at everything i do <laughs> everybody knows this <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they keep coming back <laughs> yeah yeah and then i i just like winding everyone up about everything basically that's that's kind of my thing yeah you do a pretty good job at it uh, i mean the casting has been really good i think for most of it at least right um yeah i yeah, think it's... i've done i've done decent every now and then a couple of little mistakes but nothing big yeah, of course like the other day i had uh i had my liege in the chat with me hmm. co-casting and for the first round i had him muted like i could hear him but the the, the stream oh yeah, 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 yeah and i looked down at the thing and i was like oh <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> yeah that happens a lot right you know. and then he started complaining i was like you didn't say anything useful anyway so <laughs> sure <laughs> we'll get him back later you know yeah, yeah but and then i and then I had shit jobs on territory. Well, what mm. can you do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, karma points there. All right. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. So, um, just talking generally about the season, um, you were one of the first to step in as a, as a caster. I think you were pretty pretty good to go there. You've, you've been doing more tournaments before this one as well. Um, yeah, I've done. I've covered the, a few of the like the official tournaments, if you like the CBL leagues. I've uh, done some casting there as well, and really enjoyed it. I just like the, the setup, and it's just the matches are different to territory war. They're different to to normal sieges as well, and it's just I don't know. There's just something about it that I really enjoy. It's just it brings so much more to the game than just the normal, like, let's just say nine to five bog standard games. Mm -hmm. It just makes it so much nicer for me for the like for players that have done everything else in the game it's just it's just something new and we've seen with a lot of things like banished were season winners last or one of the houses that were season winners last season mm. and they got absolutely trashed in the tournament if we're being fair like they, mm. they'll all agree with me on this and it's it's just because the how you play is just so goddamn different um and it's just like for such a, a small game if we're fair it's just such a it's, it's such a good new dynamic to have or like it's like one step further do you know what i mean it's not just yeah. It's it's just I don't know. There's something about it that I, I just really enjoy. Yeah, it's really interesting. But, yeah, and I just don't have the time to to train myself and do stuff. I probably <laughs> wouldn't be good enough either if I'm being honest. I'd I'd say I'm decent, but I'm not I'm not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, that's it, that, that's what the players can can try to improve at. I mean, you're doing a great yeah. job at the casting, um, specifically for the CB rifles. Uh, how have you liked the casting? I, I know you've put in a lot of time into improving your own cast. You've done something with the video. You've done the sound, like the yeah. the the sound commands. Uh, that, that's pretty well, I, pretty cool. The the best thing I've liked about this league and what's gonna that's gonna continue going forward. Like mm. we obviously start with dead uh, deader or header. Yeah. Um. Like I know header. Like we were in the same house for quite a few seasons. Like two, I think two or three. And then he went to EU one. And um, I can't remember when it started. It just started one time, and I just started winding him up about being shit and that he always dies. I can't remember what it was for, though, <laughs> just as a joke. And then I was like, as soon as I was casting him, I was like, right, it's got, it's got to happen. Yeah, yeah, true, true. <laughs> and then, like, building up things like that, and just, like, there's, there's plays that you always keep seeing, like, every uh -huh. week. And it's just, it's just, I like to have fun. Like, gaming for me is fun. Like, I don't go into all the statistics and stuff properly. It, it doesn't interest me personally, so if I did mm. cover it, everyone would notice that I was bored. And I just <laughs> like having a laugh. So... It's just the fact that you, you can, like, start... I, I've had contact now with basically all of the team captains, or most of them, some of them a few times, if I've been lucky enough to cover a few of their matches. And it's just so nice to, like, start building up, like, the, the memes, if you like, and just having a laugh with people. And just, like, when I was playing the other day with Banish just for the laugh, because it was the, the, the last match of the league, and they'd basically already lost. Um, I was just writing in local chat. Unfortunately, you can't see that in the fights, but I was just writing in local <laughs> chat, just being basically an idiot. Just having a laugh, like everyone was getting involved as well. It was pretty funny, man. Like, yeah, um, good. and it's just what, what I like doing. And like, being able to like integrate that while I'm streaming, like talking about the matches and stuff, is mm. just always, always good. I, like some people at the beginning were probably thinking, "Who is this douchebag?" Because there was people I never even spoken mm. to, and then just started ripping them because their their names crap or something nice, like, or nice. I couldn't say their name and then stuff like that. And they're probably like, "What is going on?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. I believe uh, SM3 is one of those names you screwed yeah, over yeah, yeah. at the start. Uh, I, I know. I, I remember I just correctly. Talking for like for about yeah. five minutes about how his name's terrible yeah, and he terrible. needs to change it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happens as well. But I, th I think it's really good. It like like you said that the tournament brings so many new things to the to the players like it's, it's it's a new kind of end game thing that you can do nice. in this game but it's also so fun on the entertainment side like for for you yeah, as a content definitely. creator casting the games having a joke making jokes about it it creates yeah. uh, so much positivity in the in the community as well i believe definitely because yeah. i think it happens with a lot of games as well like eventually you basically just end up having just like the the I suppose I, you can say I troll as well, but like mm. I don't do it in like a mean way. Like I just have a laugh with it. Yeah. And if people watch when I'm doing things, I actually wa like take make more jokes of myself or about <laughs> myself than I do about other people. And then I think that's how I get away with it, to be fair, but just because I'm just probably even worse to myself than I am to anyone else. <laughs> uh, I, I think you're just but, uh, being br brutally honest about about almost everything yeah. you say, and yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, that's fair game. Yeah. <laughs> But I like I like the long format of this league thing as well because it just gives it more time to build things up. Yeah. And then you'll have like you'll we'll end up having like rivalries like a big mm -hmm. one's probably we'll probably speak about this later. We are clans and pond guard. I can see being like a big rivalry going forward if both teams stay involved for a long time. Yeah. Um, and then you have got other teams that will be able to improve like Jet Culture is like just a little bit beneath them. So like teams yeah, like Blame exactly. Elias, they're all like there or thereabouts. Yeah. And I think that's going to be cool seeing how that progresses. Yeah, like, totally. Well. Actually, now that you've started about it, let's just bring up the schedule um, and the standings, yeah. actually. We'll, we'll, let's just go <laughs> over it. <laughs> you start anyway, we can just do it. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of what I do. I just start winging it and then I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just go with the flow there. Yeah, so um, uh, this has been a kind of a weird week. Normally, we have all the games being played on one Sunday, but this time, because of Easter, we had to split it up because some teams couldn't make it. Uh, so we've had uh, three games being played now, mostly from Pool B and one from Pool A. Um, and those games have actually mattered a lot. Uh, in Pool A, uh, Blame Elias has confirmed their second place now by winning against Chocolate Paladins, uh, which also means the Chocolate Paladins are now confirmed fifth. So they will be playing in the Rustic Pool next season. Um, and Blame Elias will play the, the third game match uh, final against um, the Eden from Pool B. So that is confirmed. And Pondegard is now also confirmed first, as well as we are clowns in Pool B. They are also confer confirmed first in their respective pool, and they will play the final match to decide the, this season's winner. So that's yeah. pretty pretty cool. So the matches that are still coming up, they will decide like the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth placed in the in the in the in the season's pool. But it won't really matter that that much for the outcome of next season or the finals. Um, yeah, is there? Uh, did you cast uh, one of the games for the pool A? We can start about. That uh... The Blame Elias one this, against this... Chocolate Paladins? Yeah, I, yeah, I casted that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, yeah. 
Yeah, that was a good match, man. Um, that was one where they tried the strat where they suicide the heroes mm -hmm. off the wall after they've taken A, yeah. and then when they all die, they all like mass spawn on the side gate mm -hmm. and then try pushing through. Didn't quite work out for them. Um, but yeah, I covered that one, yeah. Yeah, that yeah was, I think that was a really interesting fun. game. I, and I could see in the in the other games as well that those teams have all been screaming each other, apparently. And yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, yeah, they have tem developed tem a new strategy. Tempo shot from We Are Clowns yeah. was like, oh yeah, we did that strat against both teams. It's like a shame for Chocolate Paladins that basically uh, Blame Lisa had already seen it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> against We Are Clowns. And then the best part was the day later, We Are Clowns do the exact same strat. Yeah, against, against um, Eagles, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah so that, that was... <laughs> that was quite kind of funny. Yeah, that was but, really like, He fun. basically said that, that he was going to do it and then just did mm. it. And then every, I, I didn't even think that he was going to do it. I was like, no, nah, there's no way he's going to do that if he yeah. said, like, on the stream that he was he's, he, he did it in training. It's yeah. like, why would you tell the enemy what you're going to do? But uh, they were just confident enough that yeah, they were going to exactly. win, so they just said it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. And when we go to Pool B, we'll talk about weird clowns because, yeah, they are really confident, uh, it seems. Um, but yeah, you could see I, it, you could see it in a match with Blame Allies and Chocolate Paladins that Blame Allies knew what was coming because they were rushing to the to the small gate. Yeah, like as, really as soon as yeah. as soon as they rushed down and suicided, they mm -hmm. I think they knew because they were instantly rotating. Yeah, and I think I think I even called it on stream. I think though, if Chocolate Paladins have had a little bit more infantry, because mm -hmm. I don't think they had like ninety percent cav. Yeah, I reckon they'd have been able to get through there. It's just because the way Blame Allies rotated, one they were lucky. They just mm -hmm. had like I think the first unit was like. Palace guards or IPGs, I can't remember which, yep. but they just like like IPG walked into it and just stopped everything, yeah, basically, exactly. like literally everything. Yep. And I think they had like Zakalian throwing bombs over, and then that was it. It was mm -hmm. just unlucky, man. I yep. reckon if they'd have had infantry though, like Palace guards themselves, just squat to shit and just kill the IPGs, they'd have been they'd have been all over that. Yeah, yeah, that true, was just true, unlucky. Yeah, yeah. So cheat the MVP while we're talking as well, right? I'll stop playing now. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Nice. Hold on. All right. Yeah. So and for Pool A, we've still got uh, three games coming up. It's Holy Crusaders versus Surf Slayer, Jack Ultras versus Triarchy, and Onus Legion versus Bond Guard. They will all be played on Sunday, if I'm correct, or Saturday, but I believe all of them are Sunday. Um, and then if we go to Pool B this time, uh, we can see yeah. We Are Clowns have won every single game, not even a tie. So. Um, they rightfully deserve to be very confident and even give other teams ideas about how to approach a map. I mean, it has been a very different approach to Harbor City and apparently We Are Clowns have introduced it. Um, normally they try to defend the supply harder and they seem to have found a way to get around this, that supply defense. That uh, yeah. I think it was L L Lama Land that once introduced that kind of uh, defense on, the, on Harbor City. Um, and now they seem to find a defense within the city, which is very interesting. It's also very different from what you see in the sieges that you normally play. Yeah, because so. they basically ignore, if you like, the end line where the cap mm -hmm. is and go like one street further forward is if you like the last defense. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, unless they break through and then they fight on base point, but it's... Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it requires a lot of um, like good communication because you need to rotate, support each other, depending on where yeah. the push is coming from. You could see it in, 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 one, in one of those games as well, where they got out rotated a little bit and they had to I fight think on I've, the end point. Yeah. I've spoken to a few of the team captains and like the, the consistent thing I've seen or heard as well by all of the better teams is mm -hmm. they don't just have one guy shot calling like you would in Territory because they're not in bird's eye view. Like everybody's making calls. Yeah. And then you have like the main shot caller that then decides with the calls that are being made. Like everyone's basically screaming at each other from what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just gets cut across, right, we're doing this. Yeah, exactly. And like you, you see it with clowns do it exceptionally even when they're defending. If they see, like, they're on defending, say, like, the eastern flank, let's just say, mm -hmm. just some random, and they know that their eastern flank out outnumbers the, the enemies that are against them, they'll just push out and kill them. Yeah. And then they'll, all, they'll like, counter-rotate to where the rest of it are, and just basically all the fights are taken, they always have numbers. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's really nice to watch, man. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's really good. Watch. It's really good games. Uh, one of the games that was also really nice to watch uh, was Slavs versus Rose, uh, also in round seven from Pool B. And uh, yeah. that game was very, very good, I gotta say. Um, those that teams, was so close. Yeah, that was really, really yeah. close. So close. It was insane. Um, yeah. Uh, have you seen it as well, uh, Corto? Um, just uh, Knife Fingers talk about the, the short color mm. to uh, to move all the team. Oh, yeah. But uh, another thing is very important is uh, the man or the two or three man to cover the back. Ah, yes. And mm. this guy must be have uh, a good eyes and not no, uh, they must uh, follow the shot color mm -hmm. but have sometimes some initiative yeah. uh, to know if they push with or they cover the back of uh, 
Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the hardest part. Like this one player has to be very confident in not like going too far out or back. It's, it's pretty, pretty close. Yeah. But yeah, so Slash versus Rose was a really nice game. Uh, Rose won, um, confirming their uh, third place, I think, in the group. Slavs is now fourth, I think, in the group. But both will make it to the feudal pool. Um, so the, the top tier pool for next season. Uh, we'll talk for two of them late later uh, about his team and uh, Slavs being actually the only team from EU2 to make it into the feudal pool for next season. So that's, that's pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, so that's the standings. Uh, pool B has finished now. Pool A still has got a few matches to play for. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, but like I said, the finals are decided. And also uh, the feudal pool and rustic pool teams are also almost all, all confirmed. So that's it. All right. Um, I think it's time to bring in uh, Vamblade. Um, he's the team captain from Slavs, uh, from EU2, of course. Um, I think most teams have been very, very surprised by their performance this uh, in this season. Uh, so nice welcome, welcome, Vamblade. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> uh, good to have you on this podcast. Um, I'm really happy you could join us. Um, congratulations on making it to, to the feudal pool, first of all. How do you feel about it? Oh, it's it's it's. To participate on this tournament like this is a pleasure, mm. man. No experience. This is what we are looking for. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. On, on this, uh, on this last match mm -hmm. versus Law or also too much, too much uh, experience and uh, emotion. <laughs> what we? Yeah, I noticed that you made a few mistakes. I think. Uh, uh, what? 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 Did you feel Can like you your did your team make a few mistakes that you normally would not have made? Um, no, no, no. We we uh, on on the first uh, on first um, tactic. Ah, sorry, man. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I remember, I, <laughs> I, I back from party. Sorry, but yeah, it's okay. But it's I, good. Don't worry, my English is so bad too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my, my English is uh, terrible, and I'm English, so don't worry about it. But no, no, my English is uh, terrible. maybe not not good for on on this condition. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, well, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, so uh, actually, yeah, you, you've got a Polish team, so um, as as long as your Polish is good, that's that's okay. Yeah, if, uh, every everyone is happy. Yes, uh, it mm. uh, was time for really good emotion fights. The rulings of this game without uh, artillery put game into close cooperation and tactics. Yeah, that's what we like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you really seem to like to fight. So, um, what was your favorite favorite game of the of the season? Uh, I, I think I don't have favorite match. However, mm. I think the tactics uh, what we played. On the Sun City, maybe mm. uh, map again is the uh, love and devotion. Yeah, maybe this tactic is uh, crazy, maybe and <laughs> uh, successful. We're rushing uh, B and uh, capture this very fast and uh, pushing on uh, C point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. On the, all matches without castle be, because we have problem for setup <laughs> delay. <laughs> yeah, you were a bit unfortunate having two casters who didn't manage to set up the delay correctly, but yeah, that happens. Uh, we, we, we've been getting better at that, so thank God. But yeah, uh, anyone that hasn't watched your game against uh, Love and Devotion on Sun City, I recommend uh, re-watching re it in the Sea Rivals YouTube uh, because that was a really, really cool strategy. And it's also from your point of view, so that's uh, pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, it was really, it was really good. Um, did you expect to get the top four in the pool? Uh, I'm optimistic. Okay. So <laughs> I, th I think <laughs> our show of skills was not weak mm -hmm. or boring match uh, to achieve the point position what we have here. Okay. Top nice. four. Mm -hmm. Top four. Yeah. 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 Top four. Yeah. Yeah, so that means that you will be playing for uh, uh, for the feudal pool next season. So against all the, the good teams, right? You will face We Are Clowns again, Eden, uh, Rose, of course, but also Pond Guard, Surf Slayer, Blame Elias. Um, yeah. So that's going to be really exciting, uh, I imagine. Um, so why do you think that EU2 will dominate the next season? <laughs> uh, I don't know. 
yeah, we will see, my friend. <laughs> we, we, we have less, uh, maybe we have less experience, yeah, uh, of team in uh, cooperation uh, to you one players. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, uh, you, our team is fresh. We're playing together maybe in two seasons. Mm. And we're working together for next experience. Nice, nice. Yeah, so you're a relatively new team, so you hope to make like even more improvements than, than the other teams. Um, yeah, we have a mix, a mix, yes. Uh, yeah. Polish and uh, Czech guys. Ah, nice. Uh, from EU, EU2 and EU5. Oh, from EU5, yeah. That's nice, that's nice. Yeah, really good. Yeah, I, I really hope that you, I like, uh, I think EU2 has been getting better, especially also even on Territorial Wars. I think the fights, there have been more fights and just more fighting in general. So I, I really hope that you can make EU2 proud again. Um, and show that EU1 mm -hmm. is not the only good server for tournaments. Uh, uh, at least that I was before I... before Endgegner, of course. I mean, Endgegner was also from EU2 and they were fucking amazing. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, I, I think I actually know why there's a disparity between EU1 and EU2 at the minute, though, mm. because a lot of the players over the last three seasons, say, that were more interested in doing more um, competitive play, let's say. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of players that move from EU2 to EU1. Hedda, for an example. Uh, yeah, that's true. Like I know, like at least ten guys personally that I've played with that are in other uh, other EU one teams that mm. were on EU two. Yeah. So I don't think it's necessarily like that. The well, I suppose now you could say there's less experience on EU two, but like a lot of the players that were interested that were on EU two mm -hmm. moved to EU one. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. I true. think I think that's what's happened. Yeah. <clears throat> I can recognize that. I, I've also seen it in the alliances that on our houses or whatever I've been part of. Yeah. That, that the, the good players. A lot of them have moved to EU one because it was more competitive, apparently. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And now I think I it's slowly starting to even, even out a little bit. But Slavs for now is the only team that can uh, can can get at the uh, equal level for against EU one for now, at least a little bit. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, Tom Blade, final question: uh, What do you look forward to for next season? Uh, I've I think uh, like all all. Of us mm -hmm. participation and who well, was well viewers for, for many emotion and interesting fights i think good let's hope for more interesting fights for sure especially from you i hope to see some more uh really weird and strange uh, strategies um so uh, good luck yeah, with all for that. sure yeah we like exp uh, we, we like mixing uh, tactics and experiment something new created nice yeah definitely so if you want to follow a experimentative team or innovative team make sure to keep following slavs um best of luck to you uh, if you want to stick around stick around um if you want to go then you're good to go as okay. well so uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll just keep you on and if you leave then it's okay so i i go relax all uh, right thank, thank, <laughs> you, <laughs> thank you guys yes uh, bye bye see you soon hey catch you in a bit bumble Hello. I understand well. Uh, I think you you answered to a question I have uh, a question I have on uh, you too. Yeah. For you, the, the last time we have a merge uh, between EU1 and EU2, a lot of players to move on mm -hmm. EU. For you, you think uh, the next merge, uh, uh, we don't have a lot of players to move, and with the time we can have a, a good second server with a um, competitive team and a uh, house? Yeah, I hope so. Um, I think that what I see at least now is that last season was already a bit more competitive, but I think the, there was one region too many that was open. So you could see in Territory yeah. War that th there was yeah. just two, two, like two regions that one alliance dominated completely. And yeah. now you see that with only two or three regions open, that all the houses are almost constantly fighting each other and yeah I, I do believe that nobody's got like all of the land as well yeah. it's very i mean it still are obviously alliances that have got more than than they maybe should have if this the the, the population was a little bit up but it's mm -hmm. it's not as bad as it was last season yeah exactly and you can even see that the big alliances cannot hold everything so there's small houses that get get into the the, the main region to snipe villages or uh, hold that like hold them for a little bit or they, they lose them but they take, take them back later so it's starting to get more competitive, I think. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's nice. really good. Yeah. Yeah, good one. Um, yeah, so interesting to hear about uh, uh, Van Blade, of course, about Slavs being a relative new team. Uh, I definitely do think they are 
uh, yeah, they were surprising. Uh, Nine Fingers, did you know any of the guys from Slavs uh, when they joined the Sea Rifles? I think I recognize a few of the names, just like from bob bobbing around and stuff when you're either in territory or just normal sieges, but I don't know, know any of them. Mm -hmm. um, at least as far as I'm aware, because obviously people change their names and stuff, but I'm pretty sure I didn't know anyone beforehand. Yeah. Like, actually know them. Obviously, seen them around, definitely. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, one guy you probably will know. It's a General Combo. He, he's on that team. He's also one yeah, of the yeah. guys who got the tournament, of course. Um, yeah, he's a really good guy. Um, but, yeah, I think most. Yeah, they all play in Legacy of Slavs, which is also a really good house in EU2 as well. Um, and they're, they're also playing in a Polish league. There's also a Polish league now that's inspired on the CB Rivals. And they basically <laughs> copy past that it. It's really good. Um, I really like that they're, they're doing it over there as well. And uh, a lot of houses from EU2 that are Polish or Czech, maybe, are, okay. all, are all playing in that league as well. So that might also improve the general level of EU2. Oh, that, that's a full-on league as well. It's not a tournament. Yeah, yeah it's a fu full-on league. Like almost ex the exact same format as CB Rivals. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. They play Friday to Sunday. Like It's a bit more spread out. But it's pretty okay. good. Yeah. That's pretty good. All right. Um, on to the next topic for us. Uh, we've talked about the current standings. We've talked a little bit about this season and the casting. Uh, we've talked mm -hmm. to Van Blade now. Um, so I think we can slowly start to talk about uh, next season, just a little bit. We will we'll talk about the finals next week, of course. Um, but just generally about next season, I think, is what do, you, what do you hope to see? What do you expect? What do you look forward to? I hope more teams join or want to mm -hmm. join. Um, because if we just, I reckon if we always end up just having the exact same teams fighting against each other, mm -hmm. eventually, unless there's obviously like big player differences or drops, like people leaving, new people have to come, the dynamic in the matches will stay exactly the same. That's why I think it's good that we're going to have teams that get demoted and teams that get uh, promoted. Mm -hmm. So that you just have new, like, one teams that maybe don't have the experience have the chance to gain experience and the ones that are obviously fighting all the time you have like somebody like Van Blade coming in with slabs a, a, a less well-known house yeah. doing new strategies and then it just keeps it all fresh if everyone's just basically like you said copy pastoring the exact same tactics and mm -hmm. stuff say, let's say we are clans and bond guard and nailing everyone it'll it'll kind of start getting stale and I think getting new teams in with new ideas um it can only be good. It can only be good, in my opinion. And then obviously we're going to have, like, in the, the Feudal League, there's going to be... Like, you can't really say more... I suppose you could say that they're going to be... Cl well, all the all the matches now are going to be closer match. Because if you look at, like, We Are Clowns won every match. Pongard basically won every match. Mm -hmm. They they massively outclassed, like, the majority of their dudes, if, if we're being honest. Yeah. Whereas now, the the... The competence difference is going to be a lot closer, mm -hmm. um, and I think most of the matches are going to be more competitive because of that. Like between the two teams, at least that's my hope. Yeah, that's yeah, like definitely. the whole point of, of like leagues in general. Yep. Um, and I think that's going to be really good because just having one team ruffle stomp in the other, it's, it, be mm -hmm. it becomes very, very mm -hmm. obvious very quickly yeah. if a t if a team's absolutely annihilating or not, and. Um, I reckon having the league now, it's going to be split off into the two sections. I think that's going to make, the, make a huge difference with um, like just making it more competitive in, in general and making it so that the, the matches for the viewers and for the players are going to be more enjoyable to play because nobody wants to play in a match where you're getting stomped. Yeah, exactly. The good teams <laughs> don't want to play against teams where they stomp because mm -hmm. they don't learn anything new. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, it's going to be really good to see like exactly what happens after this now and how the teams develop against each other and stuff yeah I, that's that's what i'm looking forward to the yeah. most yeah i, I have to think I, I can totally agree with you uh and i think uh, at least i i do hope we get to see that uh, when we talked to vasectomy last week the team captain from eden he was also talking about how he's trying to catch up to we are clowns they've apparently yeah. been fighting each other always in the first round and there was the same this uh, season as well um in any tournament um, and, and they are trying to catch up to them. Uh, and it shows that like they want to catch up to the, that team. And now Rose yeah, is doing the yeah. same, Slavs is doing the same, and they are all the four teams from Pool B. And then, yeah, they're, they're all in the same alliance as well, I believe, aren't they? We uh, are Clowns, Eden, Rose. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Jacked Ultras, and I think maybe even Blame Elias. They're all like from the same group of players. Yeah, which kind, is kind, kind of hilarious. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> you can see all the Lama being switched out, yeah. But it's the yeah, same think... for Pool A, where you have uh, Pond Guard and Surf Slayers. Mm -hmm. They have been. Uh, fighting for 
finals in any tournament basically almost um, yeah, surf yeah. slayers they, they are probably getting fourth in pool a or third um which is pr- i think below their like expected expected standing yeah. um so you can definitely see them becoming stronger in the next season i, f- I feel and b- same for blame elias they've really been improving they had a weird tie at the start of the season against i think it was love and devotion if that's possible yeah, yeah. Or Odin's, uh, one of the teams, I don't know. They had a weird tie against a team that was unexpected, and then they clearly are getting better. They've been winning almost every game now. No, the tie was against Jack Ultras. Oh, Jack Ultras. First round. Yeah, Blame Lace against Jack Ultras, yeah. Uh, let me get that as well. I should just look it up. Yeah, they're the, both the teams have got tie on the first slot as well, so. Ah, yeah, yeah, true. But that that, that actually kind of makes sense, because those yeah, two, like, that does. The, yeah, the scores yeah, that as well, they're actually very, very similar, like, with them placements yeah. and stuff. There was a weird tie somewhere, where was it? Oh, maybe um, are you on about the second one from Jack Culture's possibly? Ah, no, it's probably. Oh no, it's Rose against Chocolate Paladins. Yeah, Jack that... Culture's against Chocolate Paladins. Yeah, but that was also, in a way, that, that that's one of the teams, like you said, Chocolate Paladins. So they they seem to be able to contest the top four teams at times, but they they just don't seem to be as consistent yet. Right. I think I know why. I spoke or I wrote to the team captain afterwards and I was like, like you guys did also. I can't remember which mm-hmm. map it was on now. There was like a stage of the map where they just did absolutely amazing on. And then they like, they got into the second phase or like it was, I can't remember, or they struggled on the first phase and mm-hmm. then got to this. I can't remember which way around it was, but basically mm-hmm. they hadn't trained one part of it. And I think it was the first stage. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what map it was now, not Hidden City. I can't remember which one it was now. I'd have to look which map they played on the, on the third s- round. On the third round? On the uh, third round, yeah. I think it was Allenberg. Could it have been Yeah, Allenberg, yeah. yeah. And then yeah, they basically didn't they didn't have time to, to practice everything. So what they mm. did was they just practiced fighting at the end point yeah. because they were expecting the tactic to be uh, abandon A and B and C and just pull into the inside keep. Mm-hmm. And so they didn't have time to practice that and they only practiced actually attacking the end point. So they struggled with the defense that um, the Jack had put up yeah. on the actual points A, B, and C, and then it took them a long time to get past that. But when they got to the end point, it was just it was just mm-hmm. really strange to see. Yeah, yeah, true, true. No, they didn't even get to the in- to fight the inside point, and it was just it looked like they were terrible. It yeah. literally looked like they were absolutely dog. Okay. And then they did their defense and absolutely ruffle stomped Jack <laughs> because they pulled back to the end point. And that's what they and they, it, yeah. they had it so nailed down. Mm-hmm. It was like and they, like I spoke to Master. I was like, what happened? Like it was like you were two completely different teams. <laughs> And then he, he said, like, they just didn't have time to do it. So they only practiced, like, the, the end point attack. And we're basically hoping that the defenders would just go to the end point and then they'd been laughing. But, yeah, yeah. but they and it's, um, and I think with them getting promoted into the, I know they, they're like the top, one of the top teams in the lower ones, but they might yeah. be able to find the time for the next league, maybe. And, um, yeah, exactly. They, they've got the potential to be really good. Mm. Like, they really do. Like, yeah, yeah. some of the matches I've seen with them were just so clean, man. Yeah. It's just like, that was the, another thing we banished. There was, not enough players really that could train all the time. Mm-hmm. I know that was like a, a big problem that they had. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let, let, and getting the let's consistency. Talk, let's talk about the, like the bottom four teams for a little yeah. bit as well, because the bottom four teams will all go to the rustic pool, assuming that they want to continue, of course. But they have the, like the first uh, place in the rustic pool, um, and then any spot that is still open will go to the first team that is registered there's already a few teams so those spots will fill quickly and then if we have way more teams we'll just create another pool and have it like be played as a playing stage basically Um, and then we'll see if we can further expand the league maybe to more teams or more rounds we'll see how it goes but i do hope to stay stick to eight teams um so for the bottom Four teams, which will all go to Rustic Pool. It's Chocolate Paladins, Odin's Legion, Holy Crusaders, Triarchy, all from Pool A. And then Love and Devotion, Sivos, and Banished from Pool B. Now, like you said, Chocolate Paladins have been very competitive. They seem to be the strongest team out of the those seven teams. And then you've got uh, Love and Devotion, who is fifth in Pool B, with two wins and a tie. So they seem to be doing pretty okay. And then you've got Odin's Legion also with two wins. Uh, so those are two teams that have won against the other bottom tier teams, you could say. Yeah. Um, and then Triki and Banished are at the sheer bottom. I gotta admit, it, that, that's our teams. Um, but like you said, I think those teams have also been practicing the least. Um, where Sivos has been practicing a lot with We Are Clowns, apparently. And 
there's more of those like connections between teams where they practice a lot or they are uh, like a sub house for another sub team yeah. for another so yeah i think we can expect them to to get better and that's also the really cool thing about this league format i think is that teams that are not as good right now can improve because they play so many games exactly because in in a tournament you get one chance if you like mm -hmm. if you're just unlucky say and get thrown in against we are clowns yeah. or pond guard or just somebody that's got more experience you get absolutely clapped you learn nothing mm -hmm. everyone gets demoralized and you're out the tournament whereas mm -hmm. unless you actually have the opportunity to, to learn from week to week obviously you need to have the time to train and like put put the effort in to do do what you need to do but you actually get every week a guaranteed match for the, the length of the league yeah. and you can only really learn from it even if you don't if you don't maybe don't see it on um the map like the scorecard like banished for mm -hmm. an example it's obviously easy for me to use because i'm in banished so i, yeah, I, 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 I but like Go like <laughs> they, they were they were struggling that much with getting training like people are training that i actually did a few training matches and i'm not even no. in the team <laughs> um and like you could see though what they'd what, what like a good core of players had learned in the tournament how it was influencing our territory was as well like mm. just like hero composition and stuff um which is cool to see you maybe didn't see it in the matches against other players because obviously all of the teams are training um and then when you're playing like we are clowns eden slavs rose <laughs> it's, it's just like it's rough it's rough, like, it is yeah. rough. and then like like I, I was speaking to the, the guys and i was like you, you don't need to be demoralized you're literally playing against teams here that have been playing together for like forever mm. like literally forever and it's but like if you're getting clapped week in week i mean you know this you're in like try I'm, well, yeah. I'm the other like complete yeah. uh, loser team right now yeah <laughs> it's it's difficult not to get demoralized when yeah. you, you're facing constantly and getting smashed by teams mm -hmm. but like look at pool a as well you've got pond guard blame list jack pulchers and surf slayers all doing extremely well yeah. chocolate paladins as well odin's legion is only one too but like odin's legion i know for a fact have train a lot like they mm -hmm. train a lot i know a couple of the guys in their in their team as well yeah. and it's not like like they have got a lot of experience in there as well it's yeah, exactly yeah so it's like, it's, what, what it's not do? easy to make it to the top like you shouldn't expect to start a team and be in the top yeah. four right away um actually, it actually takes a lot of practice like you said earlier as well the tournament is so different from your normal siege or territory war yeah. or whatever you're doing in conquerors blade um yeah, so I think I think some of the guys in say banished as well. They expected mm -hmm. they 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 thought the skill cap was up here for the best teams. Let's say I can't yeah. see my hands up on the camera. I assume yeah, it is. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's there. yeah, And then they started down here and they thought that they'd catch up. Mm -hmm. What they didn't take into account is the roofs moving as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> like, yes. like if, if 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 you watch like if you watch the say beginning match from We Are Clowns mm -hmm. um, and their rotations and stuff and how the reactor stuff, it is a lot slower. A lot slower than what they did on that last match yeah and that is basically the same through every single team mm -hmm. that's in like the top three top four or even all of them you, if you look at the first match of any team and then watch the last match i swear to god you'll see differences yeah. and improvements all, across the board mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah absolutely i i know for a fact that Triki, the team that i play with has had the same feeling like the first game we were absolutely getting ruffle stomped against uh was our first game i think it was the Onus legion um and like we had really big, good fights against teams like Blame Elias. Um, Bondgard was really hard because it was this our, only our second game. We had good fights against Holy Crusaders, of course, um, but also yeah. against um, Chocolate Paladins. But those were all games that we had later in the, in the league, in the season. Um, and we could really f like feel a difference. And also um, we had a lot of players that like, step out of the team because they felt the tournament thing wasn't uh for like them basically for them. yeah yeah and yeah. then other players stepped in that really like to do the tournament thing and and they also improved the team as a whole so yeah you just need time as a, as a new team to develop and grow and this is something that pine in our first second podcast also touched on that he with pondegard has been playing for so many tournaments and he's always looking to work on the communication how the team works together um, because every player fits in a different role it's not about being the best player necessarily you have to make it that, a team a, a lot of players do not understand that as well like obviously mm. it's easy to look at a team like i generally tend to do it as well at the end of a match i'll look at the mvps of the guy that's got the most uh unit kills or hero kills or whatever because that's like the easiest thing you can see yeah, statistic, statistic wise at the end but it's easy to forget 
the guy that sat at the front, say, with his IPGs, <laughs> walking like the blob and absolutely stun-locking everything for days <laughs> is the reason that the dude that comes in with his cataphracts or whatever and just flattens everything and gets the 200 unit kills. If he didn't have the guy doing the IPG walk, he wouldn't have got those kills. Yep. And it's it's like all, like, plays off each other, man. Like, you need you need the anvil so that the hammer can do the work, basically. And that's it's too easy to forget that. And a lot of players will see, oh, I did terrible, I was at the bottom of the scorecard. And it's like, dude, you had the units <laughs> that were only there to block. Like, you weren't the guy that had the killing units, if you like. You were doing your job. You did your job. And that's why the guy that was, like, there for the DPS could do everything he needed to do. It's just it's just the way it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. It's uh, yeah, it's a war game, and someone has to sacrifice to or the other to get the kills yeah. and get get the like, the big. You sale. need to fulfill your role. If you, if you're if you're like let's say MMO, if you're the tank, don't be surprised when you're not getting the damage. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like you you've got you're there to do a job, and as long as you're doing your job, yes. nothing more can be asked of you. Like it may be you don't get the the flashy scorecard mm. at the end, but the guy that's getting the flashy scorecard is only getting it because. The other people are doing the job in their yeah, team, exactly. and with a fifteen-man squad, man, it's it is there. Yeah, I mean, and you can yeah. see, you can see the Conqueror's Blade. Like when everybody's playing muskets, you're not going to get the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a true it's fact. Exactly. <laughs> you need a front yeah. line there. Yeah. All right, uh, Corta, yes. we've been rambling for a lot, um, so I'll leave it to you to pick up on another point or ask a question. Yeah, you, you said that thing, but uh, yeah. I uh, agree with uh, all what you say, uh, and just come back and repeat about uh, the new season of the league. Yeah. It, uh, it's what is interesting in this format, is interesting in this format. It's you have uh, every week, you have a match every week. So yes, you can training and uh, practice every week mm -hmm. with this format uh, and 15 vs 15. And um, the next season and the season after, uh, yes, uh, the feudal pool and the rustic pool. Uh, must be better because the team are more balanced, more yeah. equilibrated. And so, yeah. so with time after time, uh, the, the match, on, uh, even in the, in the rustic pool, uh, we can say it's a small team, and, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I think we can see a very good match uh, with uh, maybe less classic tactic, but yeah. uh, with more KO and more uh, um, solo move. Mm -hmm. uh, move on one player on the so um, I think the match will be more interesting very, very interesting yeah I yeah. think that that's an interesting point you make as well that there might be it might be that the let's say the feudal pool with all the big teams um, is creating a certain strategy that works really well between them but maybe the rustic pool is actually developing something else that works so well that they can surprise this the the big pool in the next season yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe with uh, with a new strategy. Fin, no, so, so often, the most important is the strategy. Okay, but is the execution yeah. of the strategy, mm -hmm. and uh, it's on this we can, we, the player must do the, the, the difference. Yeah, yeah, that's very I true. Think, I think what's going to happen as well is um, when when they're scrimming through the week, they're maybe not necessarily going to want to be scrimming in the same the same league. Yeah. all the time mm -hmm. and i reckon there's going to be a lot of scrims between the feudal uh, the feudal and the rustic i, I reckon and then they'll be like people and that's a really good way of doing it as well. i remember when at the beginning we were doing um scrims or banish were doing scrims and say header for an example used to be in banish or yeah. section eight at the time and uh, we scrimmed against them and he jumped in with a couple of guys from theirs and they basically went through where we could improve and stuff or like where the guys mm. could improve yeah and i reckon that'll be happening a lot as well so like the a lot of the better teams aren't just like we're better we're not going to help you it's mm -hmm. like we're better here's some tips like here's maybe what you could try what we've been doing yeah, like exactly. try working on this yeah. and stuff which is really really cool to see man yeah yeah sure is. we actually had the same experience with uh, another team that also really helped us at the start of the season yeah that was mm -hmm. it's really cool and it's nice to see because um i think all teams are really getting close to each other through the league and through the yeah. whole competitive aspect of it it's actually what I was going back to saying good. before and what Corto said, it's like now that the teams are more, or should be more balanced, mm -hmm. all the matches are going to be better. They're all, they're all going to be closer because like nobody wants to be in a stomp match. Yeah. Like the, 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 the attacker or the defender because you learn nothing. Mm -hmm. You learn nothing from it. Um, and I reckon everyone's going to have more enjoyment next season when the matchups are closer. There's, you've got, like every team going into the next league will actually have a chance to actually win 
Mm -hmm. if you know what I mean but like if you've got yeah, like a brand new team like a Triarchy or a Banish going in and they're playing a Pongard and a We Are Clowns it's pretty I mean, rough. yeah it's going to yeah. be hard yeah <laughs> that's going to be cool yeah yeah it sure will be um, I'm really looking forward to it so well let's just find out I uh, can't wait for it uh, something that I maybe should have said before we started this whole conversation is that um, teams can register for the next season up till May 14 then we will start the season on May 22. So that's already in four weeks, actually, just a month. Just just over a month. Yeah, we're on yeah. the 20th so, now, yeah. Yeah, so we're taking a two, uh, two-week break and then we start right away. And this is because uh, Corto and I have been talking to the community managers and we've got something really cool lined up. Um, I'm going to give it to Corto whether or not he wants to talk about it. Um, but it <laughs> means that we might uh, have a schedule fit in with something else. Um, then, uh, Corto, do you want to talk about it or? Uh, in first step, we try to to synchronization to synchronize mm -hmm. the, all the event with the season. Yeah, and uh, each event uh, um, can do in the season, in the during during the season. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I think you can talk, uh, you can explain or talk uh, for the future. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so what we want to do basically is the Cyber Rivals is a league. It's a competition where you play every, every week in one round. Um, and core tournament has always been a, a tournament with a bracket where one team advances. There's actually a loser bracket as well. So that means that you're not knocked out directly, which is really nice. Um, and the way we see it is that um, if you compare it to soccer, which is very popular, I imagine most teams know it. We see CB Rifles as the you mean, I mean as football. The Premier League of oh, football. Yes, soccer. Football. <laughs> it is soccer. <laughs> football for you, soccer for the, for everybody else. Yeah. You use your feet, not your socks. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, regardless of that, no, just kidding. Yeah. So basically, if you take the uh, let's do it with the British example. Uh, so you have the Prem Premier League, which would be yeah. the CB Rifles, and then you have and the, the Champions League, for example, or the oh yeah 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 or or, or, or the Cup final. And that would be the core tournament. So the best teams from the CB Rivals get to play in the core tournament. And then probably also one or two of the teams from the Rustic Pool who have proven themselves by being first or second. Um, so in that way, you get to step up in a whole different kind of setting as well. Play more games, get better. Um, and then the goal is to also make a connection to CBL, so the official tournament. And that would be really exciting and hopefully, of course, and also maybe somewhere in the future to some international tournament as well. So there it is. That is like the future we'll plan. Yeah, <laughs> we'll gonna see. Have to, yeah. Gonna have to ask a cheeky question now. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Carto, do you need any casters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm open. It's not a problem. My, my first goal uh, is to have one caster in uh, each language. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh... I can do English and German. <laughs> yes, At the same time as well. I like, yeah. I, I like what you do, you, you and uh, Mike of Guy. Uh, I like what you do. And uh, if you want to uh, cast off, if uh, uh, in the future, we can multiply, mm. multiply, multiply. The, yeah. the caster and the, the channel and the, yeah yeah I'm not uh, I'm not against this yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's really good it will be fun there will be so many games to play to cast to watch to everything it's it's gonna going to be even better yeah yeah that'd be cool man yeah so there it is uh, yeah that's that's basically the the plan that we all have for for the competitive concourse blades uh, side so it's a pretty hype I'm really excited about it all right um, let's conclude this. Uh, podcast I think um, anything from you guys last points takeaways uh, I'm looking forward to the next matches the final is going to be absolute blast as well mm -hmm. um, everyone if you most a lot of people players have been watching the tournament if we're honest um, tune in the next matches are going to be glorious I can't imagine them not being especially the finals man they're going to be so goddamn fun to watch um, yes. it's a longer format as well I don't know if most people know that though it's not going to just be an attack and a defense but that's information that will be getting disclosed <laughs> let's say in the next few days but it's not going to just be like a, a one and done like the league matches it's going to be a little bit more yeah. comprehensive to say so we can see who is the best um yeah just tuning boys it's exactly. going to be glorious it's going to be really really good keep watching yeah. on sunday as well and then especially for the finals you know corto um all the same uh, it's nice to have uh, another format for the final and have a, a big match mm -hmm. uh 
not uh, like uh, Frontier on his uh, seven match. Mm. Yeah, five is good. <laughs> yeah, I think seven is a bit too much sometimes. So yeah. Yes. <laughs> But uh, yes, uh, I hope to. I expect to to see to see that to see this match. Yeah, exactly. All right. So everybody, make sure to tune in on Sunday for all the games. I imagine Nine Fingers will cast some, and Marco Giesel, I don't know, whoever else is casting any language. Um, and then for the final, we will aim to have a duo cast as well. So for example, Nine Fingers with Marco Gie, Nine Fingers with Sel, Giesel, Sel, with Marco Gie. Doesn't matter. Uh, same for the French. We actually have three French casters, so they will also work together um, so that's going to be really really cool um, yeah so look forward to all of that uh, make sure to join the discord if you haven't yet uh, make sure to go to the youtube to rewatch all the games that have been played um, <laughs> every single one you don't want to miss it um, and then just keep on riding the fun yeah that's it see you next yeah. week <laughs> bye bye